Thank you. Social media has created a real problem. I'm just saying. <laughs> you got what? You got LinkedIn. How many people on LinkedIn? Like 100 million people, right? You've got uh, Twitter, 100 million people. Maybe even we're close to 200 million people as we're kind of creeping up. Facebook, something like a billion people, right? I think we are losing the personal touch. Would you agree? Yeah. Absolutely. We're losing the personal touch. There's no question about it. <clears throat> it's kind of funny. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel got this great show. Maybe you've heard of him. Four years ago, he came up with the Unfriend Your Friends campaign. Familiar with this? Yeah, and what he claims is that those people on Facebook are not your friends. So if you have 2,000, 3,000, how many are really your friends? How many are getting up out of bed to help you? And he's got a really great approach to this, and he does this every year, but his approach is this. You want to really find out who your friends are on Facebook, send them a note and let them know that you are moving and that you need people to help you move. <laughs> Those that respond and say that they will be there to help you, they are your friends. Everybody else, unfriend, unfriend. We are absolutely losing the personal touch. Now, I teach a little class at Rutgers University and all the millennials, and they think that networking is Facebook. As soon as I start to get into some of the concepts I'm going to share with you, they realize that they're not going to land a job unless they know how to make the personal touch. And what I will probably say over and over again today is it is about the connection. It is always about the connection that you make. Now, I'm also an amateur boxer. Kind of unusual, right? Little Jewish guy in his 40s, you yeah. know? Just saying. And, and <laughs> the, the, the New York coming out of me, right? And boxing is kind of like networking. How's that for a stretch? And that they're, they're, they're both about the connection, right? <laughs> Just saying. The more and better connections you make, the more successful you will be at both. And so there it goes, right? And there's my concept of knockout networking, right? So I want to talk to you about rediscovering what the personal touch is about. Because I believe that you will accomplish more if you're able to leverage what social media has to offer. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm on all those platforms as well. But how can you leverage it into making a personal connection? Now, let me just share with you how I learned about some of these concepts of networking and how to personally connect with people, or at least how I rediscovered this. It's 13 years ago, I decided to start a business where I would speak and consult and train. And the only way that I knew how to bring in business, because I did not have a multi-million dollar marketing budget and PR campaign, is to just talk to people. So I would just think about, what's the type of business that I'm after? And then, where do I need to go? What do I need to say? And with whom do I need to say it? And I just practiced that and just started talking to people, collaborating with them, and creating what I like to call a we dynamic, where I'd get into a place, if I liked them, where I would kind of decide to say, or, or I would say, how might we help one another? Or what can we do to help one another? How can we support one another's business? And then so it goes. That's all I knew. And then one day, an organization contacted me, and they wanted me to be their Northeast regional speaker and talk about networking. Now, I had never spoken professionally about networking before. I would just speak about and teach about different topics that companies would ask. And since I was new in business, I'd say, yep, I could do that. Yep, I can do that. And I would just accept those projects. But all of a sudden, this project came out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, a big uh, regional meeting where I'd be speaking in front of a lot of people about networking. So my response was, well, I've never spoken about networking before, bad response. <laughs> uh, why would you want somebody to come in and talk about networking? So he shared how his industry, which is engineering, is looking to make more and better personal connections, and that he felt that I knew a lot of people and I got referred, and I thought that was really great. Now, why me? He said, because you seem to have a different philosophy about it. Now, I didn't want to even do this because I'd never gotten in, in front of an audience and spoken about networking. So I, I came up with a really lofty fee thinking that it would go away. <laughs> How, how's that for some backward thinking? Well, he said OK to the fee. Now I said, oh my gosh, now I actually have to do this. So I, I retraced my steps, and, 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 and I started creating PowerPoint slides, because I was terrified to get up in front of eight, 900 people and talk about, share concepts that I'd never really shared in front of a group before. So I had something like 78 slides to do this 45-minute talk. And what I did is I listed all of the things that I thought I was really good at networking, which is like five slides, and all the rest made up all the things that I'm not so good at. And I peppered it up, made it very self-effacing, and that became my presentation. So I got up in front of all these people, 
And on the third slide, I put, and I have no recollection of this, I put the remote down and I was just on. And I just bounced off of the audience and I knew some people and I was using people's names and as Fred always says and as Jim taught me. And all of a sudden I had a presentation. I was just in a groove of which I have absolutely no recollection of. So after I'm getting to like the 45 minute time frame, uh, kind of winding down, the other speaker, I learned, did not want to go after me. <laughs> so they asked if I can do another hour. Should I do another hour? Yeah, and I did another hour. And it was, like, it was effortless, and I realized that I had my groove. So I created my whole, program out, uh, my whole program around those concepts on those PowerPoint slides and all the things that I do that seem to work well. So that said, let me define what networking is. Networking is simply a proactive approach to meeting people. A proactive approach to meeting people to learn in the hopes of or with the prospect of helping them. That's it. That's all networking is. A proactive approach to meeting people to learn with the hopes of or with the prospect of helping them. Not to sell your stuff. Not to pitch your ideas. Not to sell your wares. So it's all about learning from and potentially helping people. Now, I'm not here to suggest that you can learn from and help everybody. You don't even like everybody that you meet, do you? <laughs> I know I don't. Now, when I am not a speaker guy, and instead I'm a networking guy, I'm some guy going to an event and shaking hands, kissing babies, or shaking babies, kissing hands, I I've decided that I only like about a third of the people that I meet. One third, which is to suggest that two thirds, not so much. <laughs> not that I hate them, you know, like I hate you, you know, but there's just not a vibe, there's just not a connection. Have you ever experienced that? And, and, and I liken this to going to somebody else's wedding. Ever go to somebody else's wedding and you're at a round table and you're kind of coupled out? Well, if, if, if it's a good situation and you connect with the people at the table, one thirder, it's a great time because it's a night out, you're eating, you have some wine, life is pretty good. If the connections are two-thirds, which is to suggest not a connection at all, does anybody ever come back to the table? <laughs> That's the two-thirder dynamic. So it's all about looking to learn from and pot potentially connect with those that are of one-thirder, in which case you feel a vibe, you feel a connection. With me? And you always know when there's that connection. Now there's two different types of networking, two different types. There's what I call serendipitous networking and there's strategic networking. Serendipitous and strategic. As you think about this, you could probably imagine what the difference is, right? Serendipitous is you just sort of happen upon somebody. Ever do that? You didn't mean to meet them, but you did. And now there's like a one-thirder connection. And now you're able to speak and connect and back and forth and there's common ground and all that, right? And then there's strategic networking. That's networking on purpose, with purpose, or with purpose, on purpose. That's knowing exactly what it is that you're after so you can figure out where you need to go, what you need to say, and with whom you need to say it. Serendipitous networking. In my work, I travel all over the place. I'm on planes all the time. And typically, I am seated next to somebody. Now, I figure if we're traveling one, two, 3,000 miles together, we're only this close, I figure, you know what, why not avail us of a quick introduction, right? We're this close. It feels kind of awkward to me not to. <laughs> now, don't jump to conclusions. I am not somebody that's going to talk somebody's ear off. I'm not a chatty Cathy. Nobody has ever pressed a security button to ask to have their seat changed. It hasn't happened yet. But on this, but on this one occasion, I was seated next to um, a young, very attractive woman. Of course, I'm going to introduce myself to her. <laughs> Just saying, right? <laughs> so, it, <laughs> so and, and I tell you, I wish I knew this stuff when I was single. I do. So in this one situation, we're this close, and I avail us of an introduction. Good morning. My name is. Very nice to meet you. You're traveling on business, I see. What type of work do you do, if you don't mind me asking? And at this time, this woman headed up human resources for a pretty large consulting company. Not bad. She said, how about yourself? And I told her what I do in a very positive, focused, deliberate, uh, marketing gravity sort of way. 
where she became very curious about the work that I do. She said, really? So you speak about networking and referrals. I said, well, that's right. She said, you know, that's really funny. I, may I share a story? Not three months ago, we brought somebody in that I think does similar work to what you do, and he never showed. <laughs> like in my business, that never happens. <laughs> I said, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, gossip. You, you, you gotta tell me. Who is it? Because I'm probably known. So she whispers it in my ear, and of course I know who it is. Like, son of a gun. So ever feel somebody just staring at you? Well, I felt her staring at me. So I, I looked over, and she said, if we were to hire you, would you show? <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, right? And so it goes. If I don't introduce myself to that young woman, that never happens. Agreed? And that's serendipitous networking, and man, I've got stories. And then there's strategic networking. Strategic networking is knowing exactly what it is that you're after so you can hopefully act upon where to go, what to say, and with whom. Now there's five reasons, five reasons why people network in the first place. The first is business, more business. Now more business can mean a lot of different things. It could mean more sales, like somebody like me is looking to attract more sales opportunities and referrals. It could be uh, promotion, corporate opportunities, right? It could be that. It could be lobbying for a cause, it could be fundraising. All of that I would put into the bucket of more business. Where to go, what to say, with whom, provided you know what type of business or what it is that you're after. Second reason why people network is to land a job, land a job. 76% of those that are landing jobs are doing so through networking, according to Lee Hecht Harrison. 76%, where to go, what to say, with whom. Now, I volunteer quite a bit of time through the Department of Labor to help people that have been upsized, downsized, right sized, left sized, supersized, because I've got a very soft spot for, for, for people that are in career transition. It's a horrible place. Maybe you've experienced that. On this one occasion a couple of years ago, it was a pretty big group, and I was gearing up to do this talk. And I was speaking to an older gentleman in the back of the room, and by older gentleman, I mean older than me. And he knew who I was just through my work with the Department of Labor. And he said, yeah, you're the networking boxer guy. Well, that's right. He said, I'm a big networker. I said, that's really great to hear. Tell me a story. He said, just yesterday, I was on LinkedIn for 11 hours. <laughs> I stared at him in horror for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> I said, with respect, how long have you been in career transition? It had been a year and three months. I suddenly felt sad. I went and I did my talk. At the end, he came over to me and said, I really wish I would have met you a year and three months ago. I said, you should have looked me up on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Rediscover how to make the personal touch. But I digress. So there's five reasons why people network. More business, to land a job. Third reason is to learn something. Learn about an industry, learn about a profession, a market segment, a niche, a skill, where to go, what to say, and with whom. It's how I learned how to box. I just simply went to a boxing gym and walked up to a guy that was jumping rope that looked cool. And I just approached him, took his music off, and asked, teach me how to do that. I want to look cool, too. And he, that's what I said. He gave me some pointers, and he ended up putting me in touch with the guy that trained him, who you know, trains boxers. And I hit it off with him. And he dared me to hire him for six months to compete in the ring. He said, I could teach you how to jump rope in just one day, but hire me for six months, and I want to teach you how to fight. We're going to have you compete. And I thought, look, little Jewish guy in his 40s, give me a break. <laughs> you know, I hit like an accountant. Please, I'm not going to box. <laughs> But I did, I did like the six-month challenge, and I took him up on it, and I said, train me as if I'm going to get in the ring. Two months later, he set me up with uh, some pretty, pretty serious sparring. I did very well, and my boxing career took off. It's always about the connection, where to go, what to say with whom. So more business, land a job, learn something. Fourth reason why people network is social reasons. Social reasons, to meet friends. Uh, to meet people that have something in common with you, common ground, whether it's boxing, whether it's golf, whether it's whatever it is. Uh, to meet the love of your life, perhaps, to date. I, I, I wish I knew this stuff when, when I was single. Where to go, what to say, and with whom. And the fifth reason why people network is to solve a problem. Solve a problem. My mom has Parkinson's disease. She's had it for about 12 years, we think. Now, I am told that I have boundless energy. 
My mom did too, but now she's in a wheelchair and she barely speaks and she needs help eating. And my dad's a retired New York City police officer getting his butt kicked every day being a full-time caregiver. I can't even look at my mom without having tears in my eyes and then I have to explain it to my little ones. So part of the connections that I look to make, and I know I don't do this enough, is to ask about, learn about better meds, better doctors, better treatments. And over the years, things have gotten better, at least better than they might have been. I live and breathe this stuff. I live and breathe this stuff, man. Think about what it is that you are looking to accomplish in your world and figure out the specifics around that. Not just I'm looking to land a job, but what type of job where to go, what to say with whom, and decide what your strategy is going to be. <clears throat> now I want to introduce uh, a, a concept that, um, that might help you execute on that. The concept I refer to as PEACE. That's my acronym, PEACE, P-E-E-C. And it stands for Profession, Expertise, Environments, Call to Action. What's really cool is that with this model, I have the privilege of watching my, my the students in my Rutgers class actually execute on this concept, and I watch them before my very eyes land jobs and make connections, which is pretty cool. Profession, expertise, environments, call to action is peace. Profession is who you are, what you do, and with whom. Who you are, what you do, and with whom. So you might say something like, I'm a student with a focus on training and development looking to land a job as. That's profession. Expertise is your depth of knowledge. It's your depth of knowledge as relates to your profession or your would-be profession or your would-be business. So you might say something like, I have expertise in the areas of, or I'm developing expertise in the areas of, and just rile it off in threes networking, referrals, and various aspects of recruiting. See how that flows? The world today just likes threes, it just does, right? right? This, that, and the other thing, one, two, and three, Mo, Larry, and Curly, I mean, it, it just flows. My Rutgers students have no idea who Mo, Larry, and Curly are, <laughs> but that's just another story for another day. So PEACE stands for Profession, Expertise, Environments, Call to Action. Profession, who you are, what you're doing with whom, or perhaps what you're after. Expertise is your depth of knowledge as it pertains to your profession. Environments. Environments is simply your target marketplace. It's perhaps an industry, a profession, a market segment that you're looking to learn more about or potentially get involved with. And then your call to action is, damn it, what is it that you're after? I'm looking to meet or be introduced to a managing partner with, or a general manager of. And then any, any advice, insight, recommendations you might say as to how I might make a connection like that, I'd be thrilled to learn more about that. Doesn't that flow nicely? And that's what the peace statement does. What it does is it forces you to think like a networker and think in terms of specifics. So what I want to do is I want to invite you to take a call to action. And here it is. <clears throat> now, I can't make you do this. But what I'd like you to do, what I'm going to suggest to do, what I'm going to in, uh, invite you to do is to create a peace statement. Create one on your own. Profession, expertise, environments, call to action. And once you are happy with it, I want you to start a clock and time yourself for one minute. Just one minute. And in that one minute, maybe it's in front of reruns of Friends or something, I want you to just jot down all the people's names, and it's got to be pen to paper, it can't be on an iPad. It's got to be pen to paper, all the people's names, just first names, that just come to mind in that minute that you think are best equipped to help you with what you've just put down on your call to action on your peace statement. And then call them and bounce your peace statement off of them. And you will be amazed what happens. And you'll ask yourself, imagine if I gave myself two minutes. <laughs> Rediscover your networking approach and think about what you're after so you can figure out where to go, what to say, and with whom. Thank you. <laughs>